atmospheric and directional lighting. With our basic apartment setup created in the previous step, we will now add the overall level of lighting. First, if you've enabled it, let's disable wireframe and back to lit. It's lit. Well, I mean, it's not lit because there's no lights. Uh, in the modes menu, under visual effects, drag an atmospheric fog into the level viewport. I remember this. <laughs> I remember. Let me make this bigger again. Oh, look! There's the entire planet. <laughs> With the sun, even. Uh, inside modes, menu lights, drag a directional light into the viewport. And then uh, preview appears. Alright, lights, directional light. There we go. I don't see previews. Hmm. All right, atmospheric light. In the details for the directional light, so it is transform as shown below and check the atmosphere sunlight checkbox. All right. Um, let me just see the numbers. Directional light. Negative. 450 uh, 600 and 600 did this actually do it? alright and then we go rotation 0 negative 16 and then negative 100 so it's a late afternoon sun and then light wait a minute where are we lighting intensity in direct lighting intensity atmosphere sunlight there we go okay now the sun's up there shining into our apartment right right cool with the atmosphere sunlight checked, we can control the location of the sun using rotation mode, E, and rotating our light. The lighting in our level changes based on the location of the sun, allowing us to easily switch between various times of the day. Sure. Currently, our default lighting looks like this. Let's change some settings in our directional light to create a warmer sunset view. Sure. Uh, color picker. Light color. Wait, but oh, it's under here. Okay, uh, two five five, two three two, and one eight one. All right, now the the sun is less white and more yellow. Set the RGB shown above. Let's build the game so that we can get a better representation of what our light would look like in the game. Uh. Anytime you add, move, add or move your lights or geometry in the level, you will need to rebuild the lighting to get an accurate reason, get an accurate representation. See directional lights for more information. With our atmospheric lights setting set up, in the next step, we'll add some lights inside our apartment to light up the dark areas. All right. Well, let me come over here. Let me uh, lighting in lighting quality to like high and then build. And I also actually want to see the uh, UV maps. UV channel 0, look at this. UV channel 0 is just all over the place, right? UV channel 1 is good. So it's not just me. Like I'm not, I'm not the only person who has crazy UV channel 0s. Oh, look at that, that looks good. Hey, that looks pretty good, look at that. Um, it seems darker than in the picture. It seems significantly darker than in the picture. 
I don't know if I have my numbers correct. Also, the columns are like sticking out of the walls, which is kind of weird. And this back here is pitch black. Wait, there's no skylight. Should there be skylight? I think there should be skylight. Anyway, at the moment there's no skylight. So... Um, if we open this, if we check our things... Static mesh settings. Oh, light map resolution is there. Uh, and... Light map coordinates is 1. I think I start to understand light map resolution. So you have to you have to do this stuff in here. It's 128 by default. So then you don't have to override it in in here if you put it on the default there, right? Anyway, now that we have some basic level lighting, we'll add a point light inside our little apartment bathroom. From the modes menu under lights, drag a point light into the small bathroom. You can use translation widget to move the light around. Our light is now positioned in the following position. Okay, let me just go point light. Come over here and just go whoop, lights. Sweet. We want to put it at negative 387. Seems kind of specific. Uh, negative 208 and uh, 270. All right. So now we have a light in mid air. It's not even on the ceiling, huh? In the details, change the light color to 206, 248, 255, so it's a, it's a green light, oh, it's, oh it's, no, it's blue, it's, it's green because there's the yellow light from the sun and then there's the blue light from that, that's why it looks green. Alright, select the attenuation radius, field, this controls the influence of the light. If you zoom out, you can see where the sphere is currently located, which is too big. Okay. Change the attenuation radius to 350 so that it's only really in the room and not even at the corners. The influence range is reduced to cover our small bathroom better. Right. Click the build icon in the main toolbar. Hey, this is handy. So light color and uh, and attenuation radius. I guess intensity is also important. Um, yeah. All right, so now we've got lighting in here. So now we have the sun shining in, and then we have a, a bathroom. I feel like the bathroom light is too bright in comparison to the sun. Look, interior lighting is not that bright, right? So this is 5,000, whereas our directional light is 10, whatever that means. I don't know, I feel like the point light is too bright. Look, it's only 100 there. Why is it 5,000 there? Oh, let me drop that to 100. Because that's 100. That's 100 by default. Did I do that? Did I, did I scroll the mouse or something and make it too bright? So let me save the... Uh, hold on. File, save, or... Save level as uh, light tutorial. Uh, let me just rebuild that. 
because the intensity is only 100 in the in the tutorial, whereas I have it at a 5,000 for some reason. That's weird. I mean, now it's correct. I think it's correct in proportions, but then you can't see a thing. I, I think, I think if you actually play the level, you'll see it. Um, huh? They must have changed the units. They must have changed the uh, the units. Oh, it's in lumens. For point, oh, I see the, For point and spotlights with inverse square four off. This is in units of lumens. They must have changed the lights from from uh, like so the so the the tutorial is obsolete. So a one thousand seven hundred lumens corresponds to a hundred watt light bulb. Let me go make that one thousand seven hundred then, and uh, and build this. So the units, so other units. Other lights, the units is just completely abstract. This is in lumens. So the 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 sunlight being ten is is just a completely abstract unit, whereas this is in lumens. And lumens, if you don't know, is a is a is a technical is a scientific measure of how bright something is. Well, it's not. It's not how bright something is. It's, it's a scientific measure of how much light is emitting from a thing. Uh, all right. So this is this looks better. So just just by eye, this looks more like the proportion between sunlight and an indoor light, right? Okay, good, good, good. We fixed those, but it's still brighter <laughs> in the pictures than it is in the uh, in my level, which is kind of strange. Maybe this is also different. Did we see what the multiplier was on their directional light? Mine's on 10, right? Let me go back a page. Well, this is on 10 as well. Strange. Strange. All right, next step. Adding a spotlight. In this section, we're going to add a stylized light above our entryway using a spotlight. Great. Intensity and light color. They're gonna put the intensity at three thousand, which I don't know if it's the same as my intensity anyway. Spotlight. Drop a light there. Uh, I'm gonna go negative ninety and negative two hundred and two fifty. Uh, all that is correct. Intensity, apparently, 3000, which is quite bright, by the way, but it is a spotlight, so. 255, 230, and 169, which makes it quite yellow. Adjust the cone shape of the spotlight with the inner cone angle and outer cone angle. All right, inner cone angle is 40 and outer cone angle is 51. That's basically the, the spot and then the fall off. Attenuation radius. All right. Change the attenuation radius to affect its influence. All right, I'm going to put this down to 500. Oops. 500. You can't see it there, but it's basically how big the cone is out this way. 
you can see the, uh, the the cone showing you. It doesn't even need to be 500 to be honest, because it's quite a ways below the floor. Click the build button in the main toolbar to build the lighting. You can also use spotlights to provide additional ambient light. Why would I want to do that? Anyway, let me just build this. Uh, we want to... okay. So let's build this first. Um, all right, so now we have the sunlight, we have a uh, blue light there, we have a spotlight over the door, which is a little bit strange. Because there's no light fixtures, so I'm just looking at this as like, where, why would it be in that place? I mean, usually lights are in the ceiling, right? Or on the ceiling, at least. So the positions of these lights are a bit strange to me. Maybe it's because these are game designers. A lot of games have lights in strange places. So this is, this seems, this, <laughs> this is so strange to me. As somebody who's trained in architecture, for a spotlight to be there is really odd. At least put it higher up. Did I put it in the wrong place? 250, right? No, it's 250. I don't know. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> it's like, it's a spotlight. Basically, the spotlight is like just above your head. 250, so 200 would be 2 meters. So 50 centimeters above your head is a spotlight coming straight down on you. That's, that's so weird. Anyway, it's, anyway, it's a light tutorial, not a... We're not teaching you about lighting design, we're teaching you about how lights work. Alright, spotlight 2. And spotlight 2, let me just make this smaller again. Spotlight 2, we're going to change to those numbers. So we go negative 350, 1700, zero, zero, 2, and then 90 there, 0 there, negative 90 there. Uh, what else? This will shine additional light into our apartment from the outside. Why? Why would you do that? The sun is fine. The sun is fine. You don't... I mean, I guess we're missing skylight, but still. In the details of our new spotlight... Are you going to make it dim? Are you going to make 40? Oh, wait, that's not it. That's the color, my bad. You're going to make it uh, inner, outer... Attenuation radius 500. Additional settings under light. Use inverse, uncheck use inverse square fall off. Okay, so now it's just a giant light with no fall off. Uh, by the way, inverse square fall off is because, so, so the light radiates outwards in a sphere, right? So your light source here, it, it radiates outwards in a, in a sphere. And so close by, let's say, like, if, if the light is, is here, and it lights a, a piece of thing like this big, by the time it gets to here, the surface is this big. So the light, like, anyway, you, light cones. So basically the same amount of light is hitting a, a wider and wider area. As you go further and further away from the light source, the same amount of light energy is spread over a, a wider and wider area because the, the sphere gets bigger and bigger as it extends outwards from the light source, is what it means. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, so when you turn off inverse square fall off, you're turning that off. So instead of instead of the light spreading out 
and losing intensity as you go outwards. You're just maintaining the same intensity as 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 far as you you go. Um, anyway, see the inverse square fall of content example for more information. I don't know if that's useful or not. <laughs> I don't know if this is useful or not. Anyway. The rest of the settings for the lights are shown below. Eight, uh, shadow bias, shadow resolution is a new thing that's not even in there. Cast. You may notice we have elected a light blue color. Oh wait, you want to change those? A light blue color. Oh, this is also 0 0.25. 0.25. So we're, we're faking skylight. Instead of having actual skylight, we're faking skylight by having a faint blue light right outside the door, is how we are faking our skylight. Which, I mean, I get it, I just don't know if... Why don't you just put in a skylight? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> if you want a skylight, why don't you just put it in instead of... You may, have, you may have noticed we elected to use a light blue color instead of the same color as our level lighting. Doing this provides a contrast to our level lighting and creates a more naturally lit looking room. We could have used a skylight instead of using a spotlight for our extra ambient lighting. On a large scale area, this might make more sense. However, for our little apartment and to control the lighting more effectively, we use spotlights to create our ambient lighting. Why not skylights? Why not just skylights? Why does it make more sense? <laughs> In the next step, we will improve the quality of our lights and add reflective lighting to our apartment. Okay, alright, next step. We haven't built yet, by the way. Let's build this. The tutorial doesn't say to build it, but I'm going to build it. I Why not skylight? Skylight is uh, probably more computationally intensive. It probably takes longer to calculate. But I, I don't... I don't, I don't see why. <laughs> I don't see why not. I mean, the thing is, look, okay, so I come from an architecture background, and architecture mostly designs things for the real world. So I, I guess my bias, if you call it that, my preference, is to see how things will work in the real world, because that's what's useful to an architect, right? An architect builds real houses, whereas a, a game designer builds fictional worlds. And when you're building fictional worlds, you don't care as much whether or not your level will work in the real world. That's not a, it's not a question you have to answer as a game designer is, well, will my Bioshock level work in the real world? No, it just has to look good. And so because you don't need it to work in the real world and you only need it to look good, I suppose that's why you would fake the skylight like this, because as the tutorial said, you can control more accurately how it looks using a spotlight than with skylight. So I would, as, as somebody who is interested in architecture, I would put the skylight in because it gives me a better idea of how it would look under the sky in the real world. But from a game design perspective, I do actually understand that just making it look better might be uh, what you want instead of making it uh, look like how it would in the real world. Although having said that, if we had a skylight, this room would be quite different. Because the sky, like this, this, this is black here, because the sky light would spill in through the window. So it would make this room look better. I mean, we could also just take this spotlight and 
place it on this side as well to to um, pretend this skylight coming in through that window. And also the skylight would come in through this door as well. Uh, assuming that this is the outdoors, right? So the skylight should also be coming in here, and the skylight should also be coming in here. And you would see that if it were a skylight. Anyway, I'm just finding reasons to complain. Alright, anyway, let's go back to our how tutorial. Our apartment is lit, however, there are some things we can do to improve the quality of the lighting, starting with build options. Under lighting quality, select production quality level. Alright, production quality level. I mean, I was on high already, but. Click the build icon to build the game. You will notice that the build time has increased with the increased quality of lighting. For a quick iteration, the preview setting is fine, but once you are nearing completion of your project, you can switch over to production to build your final or near final project. Except it takes forever! Alright, let's build it again. Another thing we can do is concentrate where the important areas to light are by adding a light mass importance volume. From the modes menu under volumes, drag a light mass importance volume into the level. <laughs> it does take a lot longer actually. <laughs> the production setting does take a lot longer. Also, what is going on here? Look! The, the lighting model thinks there's a thing here, but the, the floor is actually flush, right? The floor is actually flush, but the lighting calculation thinks there's a seam. Hold on, let me... So now that we are in production, no, it still thinks there's a seam. You see that? Is there a seam? Like, is, did I do something wrong here? Zero, zero. No, there's no seam. But the game thinks there is. Huh. Like, that's not just me, right? This is... I don't know. I, I don't... I mean... I'm not impressed by this. <laughs> anyway. Uh, actually, no. Let me just put in this light mass importance volume. Maybe it'll, it'll, it'll fix this. Uh, where's my light? Lights? No, it's not lights. It's not basic. It's uh, volumes. Light mass importance volume. Let me put that in there. Uh, we're gonna go negative two hundred, five fifty, and uh, two fifty, and then six and 12, and 3. Alright, so we stuck the light mass importance volume around our rooms. The volume now encompasses the structure. To create a more realistic look, we can use reflection capture actors to reflect the light off surfaces. But why? Alright. First, let's add some materials to our apartment instead of using the default ones. In the content browser, under content, starter content, materials, drag the M concrete tiles, M con, con, M con, M concrete tiles, onto the floor near the patio. Drag that same material into the small bathroom. Uh, you mean back here. I'm going to just chuck that there, chuck that there. Uh, for the other floors, drag M wood floor walnut polished. M wood floor walnut polished. Polish your walnuts, guys. Polish them. Uh, while we are at it, drag M metal rust acid onto the pillars across the roof. M metal Rust, uh, Core 10, 
is is what this stuff would be. Along with the pillars across the roof, I guess across the front as well. Cotin is a type of steel that rusts, but uh, so the surface of it rusts, and uh, it's used to uh, for aesthetic effect. It it maintains its strength. It doesn't like it doesn't actually just rust and fall apart on you, but uh, the surface of it, of it will rust, and that's the uh, that's how it looks. Across the pillars on the roof, you can change up the materials and use any you wish. However, this will get us started. Don't we want something on the walls? Uh, under modes, visual effects, box, reflection capture. That. Alright, box reflection capture. In the detail, I don't know why though. In the details panel, location near the 400. I guess it's because the floor is polished and you'll reflect the room from this. Two hundred, two hundred, two hundred. Wait a minute. We've put it into the bathroom. Why would you put it into the bathroom? Uh, also set the box transition distance to 1. Box transition distance to 1. Okay. If you fly into the bathroom, you can see how the box reflection capture affects the surface on the tile. I can. No, I can't. <laughs> I don't see a thing. Hold on, what is reflections? Alright, well I can see reflections now. Uh, if I move this... Okay, so now it's reflecting the bathroom. In the bathroom. So, okay, I see, I see. So it ref Okay, I see. Uh, let me go back to lip. The current transform is not ideal as it creates a hard line in the room and was only used to illustrate how it affects the scene. You can move the box reflection capture up and down, left and right, to see how it affects the light in the room off the surface. You can use your own settings or try the ones shown below. Okay, but why? Uh, negative 395, negative 200, uh, 210, 200, 200, 300. So it's, you put it on, on the walls? You put it right up against the walls of the room. Until okay, that's all right. Click the build icon to build your lighting. Duplicate the. Hold on, let me just build. And then it says duplicate the box reflection capture. Resize it and position it over the other tiled area in the apartment. Our settings are below. Since we added a shiny wood floor material, we did not add a reflector above it. However, you can if you wish. You can also place one, just one reflector in the level and adjust the settings to see how it impacts the lighting in the level. I don't... So the reflector volume, I don't really understand what it does. So because the floor is shiny, the floor already reflects things. I'm... I still... I'm still not sure. Like... 
actor used to capture the scene for reflection in a box shape. Planar reflection, box reflection, sphere reflection. I mean, yeah, but how is this useful? I mean, this is this side doesn't have it. This side has it. I guess it, the more light is reflected. Maybe it's more obvious here because of the spotlight. Let me just do the other thing that it says. Uh, box reflection capture. I'm gonna duplicate it, and this one we're gonna go negative three hundred one two zero zero and uh, two two five. And then we go 290, 400, 227.75, which is quite specific, isn't it? So this other one, wait, it's out here? <laughs> Did I put the materials in the wrong place? Oh, I put the materials in the wrong place. Okay, well, they want this to be there. And then concrete tile is to be there, right. So that's there, but, but why? <laughs> so we take this and we move it. It just makes it slightly shinier. It just makes it slightly brighter, but why? I mean, I guess there's a reflection thing on the on the texture. Visual effects, box reflection capture. Our little apartment is now lit with some basic lighting. In the next step, we'll update one of our lights to a slightly more complex light. Uh, let me just build this first. Uh, let me switch to the next... Also, it's still brighter here than in, in in my game engine, which is funny to me. Using a light profile, okay. With our apartment almost complete, next we will create a more advanced point light that uses an IES profile, which is a lighting industry standard method of diagramming the brightness and fall off of light as it exits a particular real world light fixture. Yeah, so I mean, IES probably doesn't mean anything to you, but it's basically a uh, a mathematical description of a light, and every light is different. I mean, a light bulb, you might think, well, the light bulb just shines light in every direction. Well, the light bulb itself has a shape, and, and the shape of the light bulb affects how the light comes out of the light bulb. So every every light shape causes light to come out in a... Uh, in, like, it's not entirely even how the light comes out. I... Right. Alright, cool, cool story. And, uh, yeah, so IES gives you a slightly more advanced light. So click on the point light in the small bathroom. In the details panel for the point light, click on the none drop down near light profile. View options in the pop-up that appears. All right. So this one, uh, uh, light profile none. View options. And show engine content. Why doesn't it just show it to you automatically? All right. Unreal Engine 4 provides some example IES light profiles to use, but you can find others from the internet and import them as well. Select Complex IES Profile. Uh, view Options, Show Engine Content, Complex IES Profile. Whoa! 
Uh, that is complex. <laughs> so that's a uh, spotlight. Um, I'm trying to figure out what it is. Like what? What? I guess it's it's a spotlight with a lens on it. Just not sure about the side stuff. Uh, cool. I mean, it's quite complex. And you can see the picture there of how that works. Uh, what's going on? Alright. Transform the light to truly see it, to, to fully see its effect. Alright, let me just go click some numbers. Uh, negative 575. Negative 200. 270 and then 0, negative 90, 0, and then 1, 1, and 1. Wait a minute, where did it put it? Did I put that in the wrong place? No. We don't have a light fixture attached. You can see how the light now bends coming out of the point light. In the next step of this find and find out this guide, you will see some examples of things to try on your own. All right, so we, we just put this thing on the wall. It's a wall light now. That's a that's a really complex light. I can tell you that. I don't know why it's that complex. I guess it just shows you exactly how complex you can make things. Alright, so let's do that, and then the next step, it gives us some suggestions. Using what you've learned over the course of this quick start guide, try to do the following. Extend the apartment to add more rooms. Nah. <laughs> we can, but I'm lazy. Uh, light the other rooms with point lights or spotlights. Add props from the content starter contents prop folder. Uh, use a sphere reflection capture in a room. Use a different IES profile on a light. Create a floor lamp using spotlights. Cool. You can also change the direction of light to make a night scene. Uh, for more information on the topics covered in this quick start guide and across the entire editor, see the Unreal Editor menu. Man menu. Not menu. Manual. Manual. I sure. It's a bit strange that the beams don't line up, but uh, I, I won't complain too much because I'm too lazy to do the work. It is quite odd that the beams don't line up, actually. It's super odd. <laughs> but aside from that, hey, look, lighting. All right. What do we What do we have? What do we have? Cool. Let's play this, shall we? Let's launch this. So uh, that's that's pretty good. That's a pretty good lighting tutorial. I feel like we learned a lot. Still need to figure out UV maps. Oh wait, has this been fixed? That's still it hasn't been fixed. There's still a little thing. Look, there's still a little lighting bug there. I. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, you, you can barely see it, right? So I guess it doesn't really matter. But there is a little lighting bug there. Hmm. Also, not sure if the reflection map actually does anything useful, but what we will do is see how it looks in the engine. It might be different in the engine. Oh, here it is. Ah, uh, let's not fly in the floor. Wait, what? Oh, wait a minute. Oh no, there's no WASD. I'm stuck in the ground. Wait a minute. Why am I stuck in the ground? No, no, I'm stuck in the ground. 
Uh, cancel. Uh, um, play a start. Play a start. All right, let me just do this again. I am... Alright, cool. Oh, you can't go through the floor. Alright, so the static meshes do have collision, although, like, my face... I can fly around, though. Uh, yeah, so about this... Wait! Wait! It's not in the actual game! It's in the... Why, why is it in the engine, then? That thing is not in the actual game, huh? Okay, well... Good. Hey, good. Good on you, Unreal Engine, for not actually having a, a glitchy bit of lighting. Looks pretty good, am I right? I'm sure the screenshots look good. The motion blur is annoying me a hell of a lot. And the motion blur might be worse because I my frame rates are bad. Uh... Yeah, okay, so the sun is coming through the doorway there. Reflection... I still don't really understand the reflection volume. Or, or like why we would want that in this room and in this room. Still not 100% sure. Although you'll notice the shiny floor actually reflects the level properly. Look at that. So it actually is a mirror effect, the, the polished wood floor. Which is kind of amazing. So if I have geometry, does it only reflect the world? Like if I have a... a uh, if my character has geometry, can it reflect the character? What I'm trying to say is, do mirrors work in Unreal Engine 4 by default? Anyway. Alright, so that's the lighting tutorial. Kinda, kinda useful. Kinda interesting. We are learning little bits along the way. So let's go save all. And let's go open project. Back to this. Uh, and I think I need a break pretty soon. I just want to look at one more thing before I I go. The monkey head. <laughs> the UV mapping. <laughs> the disastrous UV mapping. Um, yeah. I mean... Like, why is that like that? And is it like that in the actual simulation? I'm not the in the actual game engine. So this here, LOD sections none. That's all fine. So let's say we want this to be the rock material by default, right? Actually, no. We didn't want it to be rock material. We want it to be um. This wacky one, super wacky. And then, light map resolution by default, 128. Let's do that. Whether to generate a distance field for this mesh, mesh can be used by distance field indirect shadows. Ignored. If the project generate mesh, this field setting is enabled. Distance field indirect shadows. I don't think so. Uh, light map coordinate index, I believe should be 1. Allow CPU access. Keep geometry data, CPU access, rather than uploading CPU memory, CPU memory. 
um, positive bounds bound extension values in the positive direction of XYZ positive values increase bound size I have no idea what that means uh, save but so I don't know what that means but what, what is it in the other things 64 lightning coordinate 2 I don't know. I don't know. Uh, right, and then this one. We don't override. And cast shadow. All right, so let's see what happens. Production quality. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't really know. I, but I do want to make it work, right? I do want to make this work because this helps me understand static meshes and lighting I don't really have a clear idea what I'm doing but I want this to work so if I don't know what I'm doing and it doesn't work then clearly I don't know what I'm doing but if I don't know what I'm doing but I can make it work does that mean I know what I'm doing or does it mean I just click the right buttons without knowing what I'm doing? And does it matter? Does it matter if I don't know what I'm doing as long as I click the right buttons? <laughs> um, good question. <laughs> good question. <laughs> good question. Alright, so I'm gonna launch this and then we'll be done. And, uh, and then we can close that. And I need to take a break, but in the next session, we're going to we are going to uh, get Blender tutorials, features, download support. We're gonna do some basic Blender tutorials, documentation tutorials to get started. All right, Blender for beginners, game asset creation, introduction for beginners, getting started. I don't want videos. Uh, introduction for beginners, and and then like some of this modeling stuff maybe, and then we we can start making stuff in Blender and bringing it into. Wait, it's a video. I don't want a video. Can I read this, dude? I don't want a video. I want to. Lessons about question course files. <laughs> I would prefer words. Anyway, we can watch videos, right? Chances are the first time that you open Blender, you probably found it pretty intimidating. Yes, you're right. I did find it intimidating. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna watch videos, I guess. Message log, overlapping UV. Okay, so look at this. This is mostly correct. Look at this, this is mostly correct. Uh, a little bit of oddness there, but the geometry is odd, so we can kind of forgive the geometry for being odd. Let's launch this. And if this works, then I take all the credit, and if it doesn't work, then um, I'll pretend it's the engine's fault. <laughs> I, I won't. I won't actually do that. But it's funny to me. <laughs> it's just funny to me. 
So I think this is going to work. I think this is actually correct. But we will examine it closely to see if there are any errors. What was going on there? I swore there was... Okay, so this shadow, like this is correct. There's a little bit of strangeness at the edges of the shadows, but you know. So that's correct. That's all correct. That's correct. The geometry does have like noise on it. Like if we kind of get it at the right angle, there's noise on the specular map. So you can see how it reflects light like that. Maybe it needs to be a bigger scale. I just scale up the noise. Make it more noisier and bigger noise. The monkey head is still slightly problematic. Alright, alright, so we, we got this pyramid to kind of work. Actually, no, not just kind of work. I, we got this pyramid to work really well. To work exactly as it's supposed to work. So I'm pretty happy about that. Alright, good, done. We're done for today, and... Uh, tomorrow, we're gonna switch over to Blender and try and figure out how to use that. Alright, I'll see you in the next video.